everybody. It's uh, Kenneth Arthur here for Field Goals once again. Uh, I am reporting a, a new video where I'm going to answer some of your questions on Twitter. Uh, I'm reporting from my bathroom because of lighting, sound, and um, convenience because you never know. And so this will be the location today and not my car. And today I asked if you, some of you would send in some questions and uh, I know I'm not Jay Glazer or uh, someone cool like Hawk Blogger or anything like that. So not a lot of questions, but uh, my dad always told me that you uh, dress for the job that you want. And so I think you have to act like you got the job you want and pretend like I get a bunch of Twitter questions when I ask you to send some in. And I think as long as we keep going like this, maybe we'll get some more in the future. Uh, you can send those to uh, at Kenneth Arthur S. Maybe tell a friend. I don't know. You know, uh, I think that's sort of how Twitter works is sharing. It's like a social network, right? So I did get a few questions, though. Uh, and let me get to those right now and see if you think I am respectable at all whatsoever. If not, then I guess you're normal. Uh, most people don't so the first question comes from at simply Hansen who asks is Trufant going to be replaced soon on the roster by Gore or other option he looks very slow out there so the Seahawks signed Danny Gore uh, formerly of the Baltimore Ravens an undrafted free agent cornerback and special teams player and the corresponding move was, was the release of Craig Lumpkin who has not been active uh, yet this season uh, it's not a big move. Does it signify a change uh, for Marcus Trufant? I don't think so. Uh, he'll, he was signed for depth because of the injury to Byron Maxwell, and that's going to be mostly a special teams thing. Uh, is Marcus Trufant, you know, as useful as he used to be? No, not at all. Uh, you know, he just peaked a long time ago. And, but I don't think he's not unuseful. Uh, let's not also forget that Walter Thurman is on the PUP. And maybe there could be a corresponding move at, after six weeks when Walter Thurman may or may not be able to eligible to return. Uh, I never really count on Walter Thurman being healthy. You know, that's uh, like counting on uh, Stephen Hawking to be healthy. It's just probably not going to happen. So right now it's just a, a depth move, a special teams move, and... Uh, I know that reading around the internet, Ravens fans liked the potential of Gore at a nickel spot, uh, and maybe that's still there. Uh, he's 26, came from a good system with Baltimore and Texas A&M, and we'll see what happens, but I don't think it affects Trufant yet. Next is at Colton Doty, who says, do you believe our defense can replicate the, what the Niners did to the Packers opening weekend? So uh, the Seattle Seahawks play the Packers on Monday Night Football, and the question here relates to whether or not we can stop the Packers' offense, which was the best offense uh, in the NFL last season. I mean the Patriots, you know, depending on how you look at it. I think that the thing about San Francisco and Seattle and their defenses is that they're similar. You know, they stop the run. Uh, the San Francisco p p push more uh, pressure push that pressure baby <laughs> uh, had more pressure last season uh, with guys like Alan Smith but I think there's similarities we don't have a Patrick Willis they have a lot better linebackers uh, right now than we do I just think that they're a year ahead of us on defense I think they're built in a similar way I just think that they got the personnel in there a little earlier uh, and, and of course we don't have a Patrick Willis most people don't but I do think we got some things that they don't got like uh, safety like Earl Thomas in com combination with the other three guys in the secondary. So I think um, the key there, the thing with the Packers is that, you know, you'd think with all the passing yards that they throw a lot of deep passes, but even against the San Francisco 49ers, uh, Aaron Rodgers had 303 yards, but on 44 attempts, that's about seven and a half yards attempt. So, but a lot of his passes go in, in their minute and then go for longer. And the thing there was, uh, he had only five targets longer than 15 yards. A lot of those 44, that's 39 that are right in there. And the thing with the Packers and the 49ers is they have the linebackers to not allow big plays. What uh, Green Bay is trying to do is turn a quick slant into an 80-yard touchdown pass. That's what they're really good at. So in order to stop that, 
you got to really press, and you also have to have those linebackers that can stop it from going that long. And it's going to be a real test for Bobby Wagner, the young guys, uh, K.J. Wright, who's just coming off a great game. Uh, I think that Seattle can do it. So, well, I don't know that they can do it. Uh, I want them to do that, but that's going to be the real key is how our linebackers play and how much pressure we can provide against Aaron Rodgers, who might not have the best offensive line. So that's going to be really the key. Can, I don't, you have to understand how good San Francisco did, holding them to seven points in the first three quarters. Can we do that on Monday night? I don't think so. It's not about not being as good as San Francisco. It's just, could, could San Francisco do that again? I don't necessarily think they could. So it's one of those things where, hey, if we can hold them to under 24 points, we might have a shot to do something good because I don't think that the Packers defense is all that good. Last question. And this comes from Jake, a.k.a. at 12th underscore army. 12th underscore army. Were they swapping Sweezy and Moffitt in obvious pass rush situations or just series in general? So, J.R. Sweezy and John Moffitt both played guard on Sunday. Uh, Sweezy actually came in at the end of each half. Uh, and was there, what was the explanation for this? Well, Pete Carroll addressed it, and I just want to get that quote right. And according to Pete Carroll, he says, John did fine. He got banged up a little bit, so JR jumped in there, and JR got some good play at the end like we had hoped. So we just keep making progress and go. We'll decide that during the week how it's going, but the competition is definitely on there. And John did all right. JR played pretty well, too. Neither of them really had any glaring mistakes that would hurt their cause. Both could play better, but they did a nice job. So there you go. It's competition. JR Sweezy got his chance in the first week. John Moffat got his chance for the most part in the second week. Neither has been great. Both have been good at times. And whoever keeps on doing the best in practice and giving opportunities in games will be the starter until the next time they suck because that's the whole thing with the Seahawks is they're going to intermingle that offensive line. That's why the guys got guys that are versatile. So we'll just have to monitor going forward because there's nothing more important than who your right guard is. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. I'm going to go take care of some bid nets. We'll see you next time.